Hey, it's Ben. I am here to do a review of the Seagull S6 Original Acoustic Guitar. I've had this guitar for a little over a year. I've played it quite a bit, and I feel like I have a lot to say about it, so I'm gonna start saying it. I was in the market for an inexpensive acoustic guitar. Uh, I had been for a couple of years playing this just absolute bargain basement level Alvarez Regent. I don't even know how old it was. I think probably from the 80s. But um, I picked it up super cheap a few years ago, and it, I mean, it looked super cheap. It had just this thick gloss all over it that felt like, I know it's a cliche, but it felt like a gym floor, just not a really good feeling on the neck or anywhere. It was chewed up, um, it had big dings all over it, and not super great tuning stability, uh, not very attractive looking woods or anything like that either, so it really didn't have a lot going for it. But it played. I was sick of it. Um, I was tired of looking at it. So um, I was in the market for an, a better, cheap acoustic guitar. And I had been familiar with Seagull for a long time. Uh, I know they're, they're a Canadian company, if you're not familiar with them. It's the same company that makes Godin or Godin, however you want to say it. Depends on how French you are, I guess. And the guitars are made in Canada. So it's made in North America. This is not like an Asian import guitar, interestingly enough. Um, at the price point, you'd think it might be, but it is not. I had been familiar with these from reading guitar magazines and such and such since I was a teenager, mostly because of their weirdo headstock. Check that out. Um, if you have never played a Seagull before, definitely the thing that sticks out about them visually is the skinny, skinny, skinny headstock. I actually kind of like that. I think it's cool. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I happened across a used one of these in decent condition in Guitar Center, and I picked it up off the wall and I played it, and I was blown away by how good this guitar sounded for under $400 was what they were asking. I'm not the world's foremost acoustic guitar expert, but this, uh, the Seagull that I was playing sounded a lot closer to like a $1,500 Martin guitar than it did to like the other import level guitars in the same price range like blows away anything from the Fender acoustic line in that price range absolutely just stomps on like the cheapo Ibanez's or Yamaha's in my opinion uh, it just sounded and felt so much better so I knew I had to have one of these and I waited and waited and waited, and finally at my local music store, World of Music, Erie, Pennsylvania, um, if you're ever in town, go there, great shop. Um, I happened across one of these on super duper sale. I traded in the Alvarez. I got this for under 200 bucks on the trade-in, and uh, that might be the best value guitar purchase I think I've ever made. So what is it about this guitar that makes it stand out compared to other cheapo acoustic guitars in this price range? Well, it kind of comes down to what you get and what you don't get. So on this guitar, you will notice there are no electronics, nothing that you can plug a cable into, just you get one strap button and you only get the one. So unless you want to go through the trouble of installing a second strap button, um, you're just getting a strap button on the bottom and then you got to use that little lasso thing to get it, the strap around the headstock. From what I can see on Seagull's website, however, the newer S6s actually do have that second strap button, so that was nice of them. I uh, wish mine had that, but the current ones do have a second strap button. You also don't get any kind of fancy wood grain. This is a very plain guitar to look at. It is what it is. <laughs> But here's what you do get. This is a solid cedar top. So this is a solid top guitar. Again, I am not an acoustic guitar connoisseur, but what I can tell you is that a solid top is more resonant on an acoustic guitar than a laminate top, which is basically plywood, um, where they'll have like a layer of nice wood on the top and then the rest of it is like, you know, just 
whatever, reconstituted sawdust or some such. And that does matter on an acoustic guitar. On an electric, I know that's kind of a debate whether tone wood is important or not. On an acoustic, it absolutely is because it's, it's literally is the vibration of mostly the top of the guitar that affects the sound. So you get a solid cedar top. The sides and back, they are laminate. So this is not solid, but you get... Um, cherry, they, they call it wow cherry, sides and back. Very nice grain, I'll hold that up to the camera here so you can see that, but it's very nice grain. Uh, looks good, although it is essentially a veneer over, you know, who knows what kind of wood. Something to note, the newer S6s have a darker stain on the back and sides, it's still cherry, on uh, the neck as well, but you can see from this picture that it does not look quite the same anymore. I think the older one looked better, I think the grain popped more, but that's just me. It's just different now, whatever. It's got binding, just basically plain, kind of like dark brown binding. Two places, got it here, got it here. The body shape is a dreadnought, so there's no cutaway. You can't get all the way up into the upper, upper frets here unless you really, really stretch, but I think a lot of people who play acoustic guitar don't often use these frets. If you do, you um, might want to shy away from this shape. You look for one with a cutaway. <laughs> If you turn it to the side, and I've heard this is something unique to Seagull, the guitar gets noticeably thinner, like uh, from top to bottom here, from the front of the guitar to the back, um, starting at the bottom and going towards the neck. So the shape of this guitar is, I think, designed so that it could rest more comfortably on you when you're playing. It's not something that I notice in a huge way, but it's worth pointing out. Um, if you look at it, I mean, I think it actually looks kind of cool like that, the way that it, it you know, kind of is wedge-shaped. You get what they call a silver leaf maple neck. I don't know if that's a special kind of maple, or, but it's a maple neck. More specifically, it's a three-piece neck. You can see there's a seam line right there at the heel. There's another seam line kind of under the tuners at the headstock. It's standard for an affordable guitar. It's got a nice hue to it. Contrasts nicely with the guitar. It's a little more orange. Just a note on the woods used in this guitar. Um, they are mostly commonly found in Canada. That would be the cedar, cherry, and maple. So that's one way Seagull keeps the cost down on these guitars. They don't have to import most of the woods. This is a 25 and a half inch scale, so sometimes on acoustic guitars you'll get funky scale lengths. Uh, this is a standard Fender scale length. So it'll be very comfortable to people who are used to playing strats or strat style guitars that have that scale length. Uh, you will feel right at home on this. Your mileage may vary on this, but something else that I appreciate about the neck of this guitar is the width of the fretboard. So at the nut up here, the width of this fretboard is about 1.77 inches. That's really wide. I think based on what I was reading, I think some tailors have fretboards this wide, which might be kind of the reason Seagull does this, so it feels like a tailor to play. I don't know, most of the higher end acoustics I played are Martins, so I can't speak to that. But it's very wide, and because of that, um, it feels really familiar to me as somebody who spends a lot of time playing those Jackson and Ibanez guitars that have that extra nut width compared to some other electrics. So um, the fingerboard being wide gives you this nice big string spacing that um, really helps my fingers not feel cramped. I kind of have fat fingers, so the wide spacing of the strings due to the nut width is... Definitely something I appreciate. If by chance you are one of the people who hates, hates, hates a wide nut width, uh, Seagull does make an alternate version of this, uh, the S6, that has a smaller size nut width. The neck itself, uh, it's a very medium C shape. It's definitely not a skinny neck, but it's far from the thickest neck on an acoustic guitar that I played. Again, I tend to gravitate towards like medium thin to pretty thin size necks on electric guitars. Um, it's definitely not as thin as like a Jackson or Ibanez neck. It would be pretty insane if it was uh, to feel that on an acoustic guitar, but um, it's not thick. It, it basically feels like not dissimilar to a Strat neck. Um, maybe a little rounder. Very comfy to play. Um, easy to get chords down, and it stays very thin all the way up here to the 12th fret when it finally kind of like levels out. Um, very even. I like it. It's good. It's also got a rosewood fretboard with, I think, just acrylic dot inlays.
In addition to all that, you get a Graftec Tusk Nut. Um, this is not just a cheap plastic nut like you might expect to find on some import acoustic guitar around this price range. No, this is a good Graftec nut. This will keep the strings from doing unpleasant things in the nut that reduce your tuning stability. Um, to that end, uh, the tuning stability on this Seagull S6 is incredible. It stays in tune great. I have had zero, just no, no tuning stability issues whatsoever with this thing in the years since I've had it. In a lot of cases, having a really high quality nut like this Graftec one that the strings won't bind in matters more to tuning stability than having really high end tuners. This does not really have high end tuners, but the nut keeps it in tune. Seagull own brand tuners. They work. They don't feel weird when you turn the keys. <laughs> have this really, really nice low gloss finish that almost feels satin to the touch. So if you look at the back of the neck here, um, you can see it's just a little shiny, but that is not a high gloss finish. It is buttery smooth to the touch. The feel of this guitar for the price point is bananas. It's incredibly fun to play and to touch. So A plus on like the tactile feel of this guitar. You get one little accoutrement here, which is this little herringbone pattern outline over the sound hole. Um, and I don't know, I think that's a nice touch. It's not gloriously fancy or anything, but uh, it suits the guitar. It's nice. It's better than not having anything. And I like it. I think it looks sharp. In terms of the sound of the guitar, um, I mentioned that these punch well above their weight class in terms of how they sound. It's got a really full sound, and I, I struggle to come up with good adjectives for um, talking about the sound of an acoustic guitar, but what it does not sound like is thin. I would never use the term thin to describe how this guitar sounds. It sounds very full, um, kind of mid-rangey. I think Seagull's literature says stuff about how like the cedar top brings out the mid-range of the instrument. In the past, I've experienced on some lower-end acoustic guitars um, that I've played a lot of, particularly cheap Fenders, um, that Alvarez Regent that I had, um, just a paper-thin sound. Um, did not really cut the mustard when I was trying to record parts with it. No matter what I did with the mic placement, it, it just sounded, like, not good. Um, this really gets you that full fat kind of, you know, a meaty sound, we'll say. It's got a lot of body to it. <laughs> So, I have to talk about downsides. So what are you missing out on when you get this guitar compared to some other guitar at a similar price point? Well, um, so that very thin low gloss finish that I was mentioning um, on this cedar top, I like how it feels, but one thing that you are definitely going to encounter with this is how easily it dents and dings. So if I hold this up to the camera here, you can see there is a pretty sizable ding right there next to the bridge, and there are others that I'll put up in the B-roll. And this guitar has acquired those basically just through me rubbing the pickup against it too hard for half a second. Like, I could put a new ding on this guitar literally by jabbing it with a pick like that. It is an incredibly thin finish and a pretty soft-feeling wood on the top of this guitar, so very easy to like ding and scratch this finish. If you're buying this guitar, do not buy it with the expectation that that top is going to look pristine forever, because it's just not. There's almost no way to avoid dinging it. Now, you might think that's cool. I really don't mind it one way or the other, but um, that <laughs> is one way to get a guitar relict is to have a really thin finish on it and just wear it off naturally through play. That's going to happen to this guitar, so whether you like that or not, it's something you should be cognizant of. In addition to that, um, what don't I like about this? And this is like... The pick guard, I don't know. Uh, I like that it has one. I think it would look weird without one. But I think since this guitar was made, this is a several year old guitar, Seagull has actually changed the shape 
on uh, this pick guard to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. The <laughs> only other downside that I would say that I've really run into with this guitar is I really wish that it had the other strap button. Um, I, I mean, it's not that complicated to just get like the little thing that you loop around the headstock, and at least it has that strap button, right? But it... Um, I don't know. It just doesn't hang the same way that it would if the strap button was actually on the body of the guitar. And yes, I could install one if I wanted to, but A, I'm lazy, and B, I don't want to destroy the instrument by sucking and installing things. So I'll just stick with the, uh, the around the headstock strap style and just pout about it. <laughs> Alright, wrap things up. What can I say about this guitar that I have not already said? Um, so new, I think these things are priced at about 500. I said the wrong number when I was filming, so I have to do a voiceover. Yeah, they're 500 bucks new. You could probably find them cheaper if you look in a store. Used, um, I see them between $250 and $300 all the time. If you bargain hunt like I did, you can probably find one even cheaper. And uh, in that price range, it's really a no-brainer. You're not going to get a guitar under $500, at least in my opinion, that sounds as good as a Seagull S6, that plays as good as one. Personally, I don't think you will find a guitar that feels better than this either. And, um, you know, looks are up for your personal interpretation. I don't know how many people appreciate this weird headstock, but I think it looks cool. And um, really, like I said, for under $500, I would rather have kind of a utilitarian guitar that's just good at what it does than one that has, you know, a laminate top with like quilt all over it. Then it looks really over the top with extra binding and everything and just doesn't sound good. So this delivers the way I want an acoustic guitar in this price range to deliver. Overall, the only reason I would not recommend this guitar under 500 or, you know, in general as a cheap acoustic is if you really want to plug into an amp. Obviously, there's no electronics on this. It's, you know, it's just an acoustic guitar. That's it. So if you want to plug this into an amp, you're kind of SOL. Um, however, it sounds great mic'd, so if you can do a mic setup live and you don't want to use an acoustic amp, um, go for it. I think this is a great choice. It's built to be a workhorse guitar. It is rock solid, and um, I mean, what more could you ask for for you know a guitar in this price range? When you're talking, finding one of these used for under $300 often and uh, this will get the job done. All right, that's it. That's all I have to say about the Seagull S6. Have a good day. Happy New Year.